Welcome, Welcome to, to the Eisenstein, Eisenstein Effect. Effect. I'm your host, Vicki Eisenstein, and this is my guest, Noah Grigoropoulos. Noah is a fabled teacher. He is quite the legend at I.O. where he teaches like the highest level of students, and he's also a teacher at DePaul. And I recently found out that he is SAG. That's right, Screen Actors Guild. Yeah, you can't just be SAG anymore because the unions have merged, so it's SAG-AFTRA. Oh, I'm so sorry. He is SAG-AFTRA for all of you mm. affectionados of details. Craig Aropoulos is Greek, right? Yes, it is Greek. My father Polis was... is a state, is it not? Uh, no. Uh, P-O-L-I-S is a city, like Metropolis, uh -huh. Indianapolis, but P-O-U-L-O-S, which is uh -huh. how I spell my name, is, is like son of. Oh! It's like ski in Polish. So you are the son of Gregor. Yeah. Well, I'm not. The first person who was named Gregor Apples. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Connecticut mm -hmm. and in Stores, which is the uh, main campus of University of Connecticut. Okay. So I was a faculty brat. Were both your parents teachers? No. My, uh, my mother uh, had gone to college for sociology and she was a... She was a like a grade school teacher for a while, mm -hmm. but I didn't know her then. Okay. Uh, she <laughs> took time off to we were, we were boom boom like Irish mm -hmm. triplets almost. My uh, me and my brother and sister okay. and uh, so but she eventually wound up working at the uh, William Benton Museum of Art, which was the art museum that was on campus, okay. but it was part of the university. And my dad taught art, so oh um, okay, so you're an artsy family then. Yes, we are. These are all my dad's paintings all around the house. What? Uh, oh. And like, is there music in the family as well? I notice you have some guitars. Uh, yeah, my wife and I both both play a little guitar, but we're we're fairly what? much amateurs. My older brother is a, is a professional. Did you major in theater? No, I majored in radio, TV, film. At okay. Oh, Northwestern, nice up in Evanston. A wildcat, yes. Yeah. Do you still go to like the games and stuff? I mean, you're close enough to, no. And then how did you get involved with improv? Were you doing that at Northwestern? No, uh, I was almost, uh, I was pushing 30 when I took my first improv class. Really? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, girl I've seen at the time, we went to uh, like Second City sets uh -huh. and, and after when we went like to a couple in a row, uh, to the improv sets and they didn't, they didn't used to tell you back then they were, works in progress that you mm -hmm. said it was an improv set yeah. and they were free so we went we were poor <laughs> and we saw the same scene improvised two nights in a row mm -hmm. we were like ah that's a chip it's not uh, real uh, so, <laughs> uh, then she had seen an ad for improv olympic which is what i always called at the uh -huh. time in uh in the reader when it was back at cross currents which is no longer there Mm -hmm. And we went and saw a show, and I think Dave Pasquazzi was in the first show I saw. I was really? Like, wow, that's cool. And uh, the girl pushed me to sign up. Oh my. Annie. Wow. <laughs> well, she's decided that she's joining us. That's okay. This is Annie, who's about, I don't know, 15 years old, I think. Annie, you're 15? Wow. And deaf, mostly deaf. You look so young. Do you, do you travel? With the improv, do you, do you go to festivals and whatnot? Um, I used to more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to uh, Edinburgh mm -hmm. and I actually toured Australia, New Zealand with a show. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's um, awesome. Went to Austria for a week of international long form. Uh, done some teaching overseas in Austria and Slovenia. Nice. Uh, did a did a UK tour with the same group that I went to Edinburgh with. Oh my gosh, you've been everywhere. <laughs> Is there like a difference? Do you feel a big difference when you're performing in different countries? Um, do you have to rely more on like object work than maybe or? Oh, uh, well, actually, in the Crown Colonies, if you will. <laughs> the Crown Colonies. The, nice. Yes, the for, former British Empire joints. Mm -hmm. There. You know, you think of British humor as being real sophisticated, but mm -hmm. they really like wordplay and puns and stuff, yeah. which is almost like verboten with, you know, here. Yeah, unless you go uh, to comedy sports, then they're like, pun it up. There are subtle differences, even like Canadians are, are much more tolerant of clowns and mimes than Americans are. 
and that affects the improv in Canada. Interesting. Not necessarily for good or bad, it's just that here it's kind of a bleh, clowns, mimes, yuck. Yeah, we do have that. <laughs> uh, and uh, they like, you know, even in their teaching, they te you know, in like John Stone's book, and he's talking about status, he's getting brilliant stuff about status, but then the games are all like guys with, you know, bowler hats knocking <laughs> yeah. each other's hats off. <laughs> well, if you could go to any time period, and I'm going to give you two years to live there, where do you want to go in time? Oh my gosh. Mm hmm Anywhere in time. Yeah. Uh, well, the first thing that came in my head when you said that was, and it's probably a shitty time to be alive, <laughs> but just for my own curiosity, uh, to be in like, you know, Boston or Philadelphia at about the time of the American Revolution would have been Ooh, really that'd be cool. Yeah. You know. See how it really went down. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Or biblical times, see what was true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's bring the Bible back and source check. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Yeah, I mean, I, I probably have like some of the, the obvious ones, like, mm -hmm. you know, Citizen Kane or something. Yeah. But, but actually, I think I like uh, Touch of Evil. Uh huh. Might be my favorite. Orson Welles. Okay. I really like Chinatown. That's a good one. Polanski's Chinatown. Yeah. Uh, but they're so like, you know, it's tough to top of the Godfather, mm -hmm. you know, just for like a movie that you watch it, it doesn't, it, it feels like it could have been made at any time in history and it yeah, would look the same. for sure. Uh, you know, the first time I saw 2001, it blew me away. Mm -hmm. It's transcendent. So it's just like. That's interesting. So you wouldn't list really comedies up there, would you? No, uh. Yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a huge fan of comedy, for comedy's sake. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, there's, I love, I grew up on the, I loved the Marx Brothers growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't like, definitely not, I don't go out now to see the latest comedy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, occasionally, I mean, I think there's some good, like, Apto stuff and, and mm -hmm. whatnot, but typically, movies that set out to be comedies. Yeah. I just like this shit ass plot yeah. is ruining some kind of okay comedy. Oh. I prefer comedy that's in service of something else often. Mm. Like I'll I'll laugh more at like a David Milch serious T V script mm -hmm. for NYPD Blue or or uh, uh, Deadwood or uh -huh. Luck or, or something like that just because the, the, the writing has such texture to it that it cracks me up. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a little bit down on storytelling over the years even though I, I love a good story. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that sometimes narrative tends to either feels the need to either sensationalize or sanitize. Mm. And both are a little bit dishonest to me. And I get caught up in stories like the next thing. I find the stories I get most intrigued by lately are like long-form mm -hmm. television. Like, uh, 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 you know, stuff that takes, mm -hmm. you know. Like a House of Cards drawn out thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. House of Cards, True Detective, mm -hmm. Sopranos, whatever. A lot of that stuff. They're not feeling because the need I'm not... to get it in there in 22 minutes and... Yeah, get the audience. Arcs, some things come up, and then they're not there anymore. New things mm -hmm. come up, and then it, it 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 has a flow to it that I that I think allows for a pace that goes yeah. pretty deep. And there aren't there aren't very many outlets that take time to develop stuff. Um, is there anything else that you really wanted to like say or talk about or have <laughs> been known to the world? Uh. <laughs> uh, life is incredibly short. Don't don't piss it away with regret. Ooh, that, that's yeah. That chef, man. Oh my God, I I never had that much breakfast in my life. Right. That brunch that's place weird. deserved the three star Michelin rating. Yeah. Wow. That's what's the top? What's the top Michelin rating? It's three stars. It is three. Yeah. Three stars seems so tepid. It does. It, you, you, know? you feel like they should have more. Three stars on Yelp. It's like shitty. <laughs> it's 
true, Marty. That's super true. This was a real treat. Thanks it for was, taking me it, out and for splurging uh, on me. Yeah, well, you're worth it. You only turn 31 once. It's true. <laughs> you only th it's turn so 31 true. once. No, I did. Uh, and the best way is with brunch. <laughs> I could not eat that way every day, though. I would have died a long time ago. I don't know, because, like, you know, I've recently been noticing that a lot of the, the older people in my life, like, you know, my grandma and grandfather. Me. They, I'm not going to say you're old. Marty, older, you're not. you said older. I did say older, but then I started thinking about my grandma and my grandfather and people who lived into, like, you know, their 80s and 90s. I'm thinking <sighs> that old. Um, so, Marty. What? You're not that, you're not in your 90s. No, no, I'm in my 50s. There you go. I thought so. But I was just thinking about being in my 80s or 90s, and it was it was just exa exhausting to think about. I guess, yeah, it's a lot of time That's you guys really spend. The, the yeah. medical community has done us no favors by tacking on years at the worst end. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a really dark thought after my birthday brunch. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is a, We're celebrating getting older today. <laughs> By eating yes. enough cholesterol to kill a deer. <laughs> I think don't let the medical community get you down. I think we create our own reality, Marty. All right. All right. I'll bite. I'll bite. We're, we're, we're a, in a solipsistic illusion, right? <laughs> we create our own reality. Indeed. Uh, That's why I started Thursdays with Marty with you. I got I really think... excited about the book, and I said, Marty, I want to do Tuesdays with Maury, but Thursdays with Marty. Now, wasn't that a guy who was just about on his deathbed in the yes. Maury one? So tell me I'm not that old and then comparing me to a guy <laughs> no. just at the very end of, <laughs> no. the, of the trail, just going off into the horizon. <laughs> it's comforting, though. Oh, God, Marty. Ah, uh, you know. You know, I feel I just, like I feel like I'm getting a lot of life advice from you, but at the same time, I feel like I'm constantly misstepping. Nah, not really. I'm just enjoying pissing in your ear. I don't get a lot of company here at the <laughs> home. <laughs> I've never understood how you could be like 50 and in a home. That was that was. It was a choice. Surprising. It was a lifestyle choice. I don't like doing laundry. Well, I'm just so glad that you know I. Could Bring you out of the home. We could get some Michelin yeah, three-star brunch. Good. It was good. If I had to die at a meal, <laughs> that would have been it. That would have been I'm getting it. so morbid. Uh, okay, I won't talk about. I won't talk about dying. <laughs> I don't. Sorry. I don't think of death as morbid. What do you think it's of it just, as? It's part of a process, but. Uh, Hold on, I gotta take out my notebook because I am supposed to be taking notes on our this Thursdays with Marty. Are you getting credit no, this for is, this? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm 31 and I'm not in school anymore, Marty. Okay, it's hard to keep track because you were in school longer than anyone I've ever known. It's true. Like a it's, professional graduate student. I have an intellectual interest in learning. It's the next step. If, if, if you could either live with your parents till you're 40, which is passe now, but I mm -hmm. guess you can live at a college till you're 40. Being a perpetual student. That's, I mean, I've I've always found that there's much respect for being a scholar. Sure. And pushing your buttons a little bit. Just, yeah. You know, it's like, it's curmudgeonly rather than bitter. Curmudgeonly. A so curmudgeon is just a is a is a. Somebody who's like a little bit of a, a crust, crust, crusty crust old for person. A, for a, essentially a hopeful interior. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's it's a lot of times a curmudgeon is is older than their years mm -hmm. in their delivery. Oh, okay. Randy, you make me feel like I need to go back to grad school for vocabulary. Oh, that was no, I'm just, that's, uh, that's No, I'm that's why I'm here. That's why I have you, I'm gonna write down the definition uh, of curmudgeon because that's why I come here, for the knowledge, <laughs> for your wisdom, all right? And this is, it's really doing wonders for me, okay? It's really uh, doing wonders for me. I, I'm feeling a little, a little tension, to be honest. Just like, uh, like I've overplayed the curmudgeon hand in some of these visits, perhaps. Well, I keep coming back. True. Okay, well, it was nice seeing you today, Marty, and nice I'll see you see next you. Thursday. Oh, you better. Yeah. You better. I, I'm practicing zingers all week. Oh, great. 
I really appreciate it, Marty. I really do. Uh, I do too. Thanks for the brunch. It's nice. Also, it gives me bragging rights. Some of these geezers, most of their uh, relatives don't visit them, so it's like. Oh, well, yeah. you're a font of wisdom, so I have to come. <laughs> All right. I'll see you, Marty. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. And scene. Uh, I really don't have anything to plug because I think I already plugged them. Yeah, I can Mondays grab that Mondo, from before. Tuesdays, mm -hmm. TNT. Go to TNT. It probably needs people the most. Yeah, go see TNT at IO. Um, it's actually at the Annoyance. At Annoyance. Tuesdays. See, this is why you need to plug things. <laughs> like, because I'm like not going to remember, so everyone needs it right then. Tuesdays, 930 at the Annoyance Theater. Mm -hmm. TNT. That Tuesday night thing. Tuesday night thing. That's TNT. what it stands for. Yeah. Acronyms. Or, Try nitrotoluene if you're a explosives fanatic. That's that's you've, you're showing your book learning. Thanks for watching or listening to the Eisenstein Effect. You can catch a new episode every Wednesday. Always have great guests. Check out the Twitter at Eisenstein E F C T because the whole word wouldn't fit, just like my name on the Scantron. And yeah, that's about all I got to tell you, lovely people. Thanks for coming, Noah. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.